A lot of web applications have functionality to send a request somewhere to fetch a resource. In this case, we have a web app that allows you to make screenshots of websites. For this purpose, this service needs to send the request to that web server to request that website, right? So that is clear. There are other services where you can, uh, I don't know, upload an image using a URL. Here, paste image or URL. So, you know, of course. So Imgur needs to send a request to a service. We call this server-side request forgery. We can make the server send a request. And people keep reporting that, even though it's an intended functionality. And here's important. You need to show and use it for something useful. Just that you can do it doesn't make this a vulnerability, okay? You need to be able to show that there's some usefulness to it. Now, there are multiple things that it can be useful for. For example, websites protect themselves and are often put behind, behind Cloudflare. So maybe a feature like this will cause the real web server behind it to send the request to you know, a, a server of your, you log the IP address, and now you know the real IP address of something that is behind Cloudflare. So that would be a vulnerability. You would expose the real IP address and then it could be used for DDoSing or something. I This probably, I don't know, should be accepted by a bug bounty program if you would f find this. Um, and you can show, you know, it's you bypass Cloudflare basically or something like this. I could, that's something I would report. Um, but uh, very critically is our issues when you can access internal services. Now you can, for example, use SSRF in, for, for example, uh, cloud services. Um, let me show you, you know, the, the metadata URLs. If, for example, somebody is, um, some web service is running on Google Cloud, you could maybe send an SSRF request uh, to these metadata Google internal URLs or these uh, famous IPs. Just reaching that is not necessarily a vulnerability uh, because, uh, you know, that sometimes you cannot even block these. If you just run on Google Cloud, these just exist. The importance is, does it allow you to do anything? So usually with, with for example, a Google Cloud service, um, certain credentials, a, a service account is attached to that particular instance. And uh, you can then talk to other cloud API, internal API requests. Sure, you can get the project ID and the host name, but you know, it's just interesting information, I guess. It's not that critical. Important is if that user, if that service has special uh, permissions and then you will need to try out, you know, if you can I don't know, start another server or take down another server, or get the SSH keys for the server or something. I don't know. You need to prove something interesting with that. Um, you can, for example, run a service with an unprivileged service account that doesn't have any permissions because you cannot always block this. If you, for example, use, I know this from personal experience. I only know this much because I, I ran into this myself. If you host something on Google Cloud Run, for example, um, if you launch a container, you, it's just not blockable. You, you cannot prevent this. It, it will just be accessible. But what you have to do is just you let it run with an unprivileged service account that has zero permissions. Then sure, you can get the host name and the project ID, which might, might suck, but um, you cannot do really anything with that. Anyway, what I'm saying is just because a website sends a, serve, a request out to another service doesn't necessarily mean it's a security issue. You need to somehow do something with it. And in this case here, we have an internal service. We have an internal Chrome service. So when you find an SSRF issue and you know there's an, uh, there is an internal service you can't reach from the outside, you should try to access that internal service. And if you can do that, then your SSRF uh, makes sense.